Hello guys and welcome to Talking Talk. That's what I want to call this. What do you reckon? Talking Talk. Talking Talk. Sure. I yeah. Like yeah. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. So this is pretty much just us chilling out. We're talking to you guys directly and answering questions and also just talking about what's coming up in the car scene, what we're doing, mm -hmm. um, and a bit of tech talk. A bit of tech talk, a bit of history. I think it'd be nice for people to know who we are. Yeah, exactly. And what our backgrounds are. And well, how, maybe how we came to be. Well, it's, it's nice to have a different pace, you know, working underneath a car is great and all, yeah. but... Um, After yeah. that last video... Oh, isn't it? It's just so insulting. Like, like you're, you're working on a car and you literally have a hoist right there yeah. and it doesn't work because we always try to get the cars done yeah. for, for YouTube, but like working around the shop, getting the shop... <laughs> You know, everything fixed around the shop comes second hand, so it's like one and, of those things. Yeah, yeah. And, you, and you can't record tired. Oh, no. Yeah. That's another thing. Yes. Like, I, I know we only briefed it in that video, but... Oh, dude, that... What about you? But I slept for, like, nearly three days. I that, felt like... I was... Brutal. No, the whole week, bro, I was, I was out of, like... I was so... Like, I was going to bed at, like, one o'clock in the morning, and, yeah. and then just... I would have to wake up, obviously, for my normal job. Yep. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm dying here. Yeah. Let me go back to bed. I, know. I, know. I was just grateful that at least my first day I was at home and then into the city. Yeah, well, if you guys don't know, we record down in Albany, which yep. is the lowest... Uh, cities. Well, yeah, the lowest cities in Western Australia. Yep. And Ben lives actually in Perth, yep. which is about 380 kilometres away, so yeah. give, give or take. It's about a four-hour drive. Yeah. It's about a four-hour drive. So yep. coming down, a lot of the things that we... Um, talk about behind the scenes, I guess, more than anything. But I mean, obviously we've been mates for 15 years. Oh yeah. Ish. I'm not even gonna calculate it, but I'll just say 15 years. Yeah, that's good way to do it, yep. But a lot of it is obviously, I need to get parts. Um, then we also check to say like, what you've got here that yep. I don't need to buy, what I do need to buy. Shipping, um, unfortunately we don't have a country that has, you know, overnight Express that we can have. Oh, no, parts from Japan. Yeah, yeah, no, parts from Japan does not happen in Australia. No, not unless um, you're literally on the flight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of planning that obviously would go into um, what we want to do. Um, but the funny thing, I think, out of that last episode was I came down being that it was just after Christmas. It was Boxing Day -ish yep. when I came down. Uh, and I really didn't have a plan out of all the times I've come down there wasn't really a plan no it was just like let's just do a bit more and then at that point it was like other than the silicon coupler I don't think I bought anything yeah oh dude I mean so we just was, we just wrap like I've been collecting stuff for years and years and yeah. years and so I have extra bits from my old projects that I've done um because I've been working on cars and modifying stuff way before we started doing YouTube. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you do, you collect stuff and I don't throw anything away, much to my friends' disgust, but it does come in handy. It does come in handy, it does come in handy. So, okay. um, so we were able to get through to it, but yeah, man, we did some dodgy. The, my favorite thing out of the whole build mm. that worked and it really shouldn't have worked was what? the zip ties on the throttle body. Well, you weren't even, Privy to that. Like, oh, no. You were off doing something else. I just came back and he's like, what? I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I've zip tied the cable so the throttle body works. I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, that won't work. And I was like, oh. Yeah, I actually like, and you can see in that video, like I'm pumping the throttle. Yeah, and it, see, yeah, it, it, it and went perfectly was, fine. And the only thing that kind of worked to the advantage was the fact that we had extra cable because obviously the original throttle position it was, was way longer. Else. Yeah. And so we had extra cable and it was just a matter of like wrapping it around. And then I was like, what can I use to hold this cable? And the cable tie was literally the perfect thickness for the channel. Oh. So I've just like chucked two together, made it like a bigger zip tie and just that one wrapped it together. Can, and we, can we talk about the throttle body for a second? <laughs> sure. Why such a big throttle body? Look, I know that it's not always about size. Dude, it's, uh, what is it? It's not even 90, it's 100 and, it's 102. 102, yeah, it's a four inch. On a three liter V6, his throttle body, and this is no word of a lie, his throttle body is bigger than the size of his pistons in the engine. Yeah. Because they're only 92 mil. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Legit. Yeah, yeah, that is actually true. And even for the new engine, 
um, it yeah, won't be. Well, yeah, the 60, 75 is there, and you're like, not, not, yeah, like yeah, once you, once you boil them out. Um, so, way overkill. It, it's just. It's, I, I think. Hence why it wouldn't idle with a cracked. Yeah, no, look. I'm it had to be completely 100%, 100% close for it to even attempt to idle. So, so, there's like two aspects of this build, right? So, as you know, a lot of it was just an idea in the shed, right? Like, the initial was like, hey, I want to make a burnout car. Um, I, said, I said, I said, finish the track like, hack. You're like, no, nah, I want to do something different. I'm the, over the track hack. No, look, I'm not over the track hack. The track hack, I need to um, spend some time on. It's just, it's at the point where everything I need to do is quite labor intensive. Um, and not to say look, that the Triton isn't, mm. but the difference is, is obviously coming down here, you have the shed and the space. Um, doing well, yeah, yeah. what I need to do for the track hack at home is not exactly something I could just do in my garage. I'm not equipped um, to the level. That well, well, I mean, that's yeah. going back why Ben comes down to Albany, even though Albany is a much smaller, like the population of Albany is much around 40,000, yeah. yeah. probably less, where Perth is uh, 2.6 million or something. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to get gear, the place to do this would be in Perth, but I'm not equipped, so it's easy to come down here. Where, where I've I've got the I've got the workshop or the shed, the garage, the garage, where all the greasy garage. Uh, yeah, that's happens. all the greasy yeah. garage. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and all the weird ideas that we come up with, and so many projects, bro, today. Yeah. yeah, but I guess maybe backtracking for everyone that might might be watching this. Maybe the one viewer that we might have, which is probably either you or me. Hello. Hello to our one viewer. Um, future selves. Future selves is our history. Okay, so yeah, unlike your dad, because I know that your dad was a bit of a hoon or hot rodder back in the day, because hoon wasn't really a terminology that was used, but a hot rodder. Um, my dad definitely was not. He's uh, ex-Navy, very black and white, uh, cut the chase. A vehicle is a means of getting around. It's a way of getting from point A to point B. Um, my uncle, however, on the other hand, was a complete um, hot rodder, car enthusiast, motor enthusiast. He loved um, Formula One, V8 supercars. And I remember early, early years, he used to have a VT HSV. I can't remember which one it was, whether it be a club sport or something, but yeah, and I remember when he lived quite close to our home, our, one of our family homes when I was a kid, um, he used to come around and sometimes he'd go, oh, you want to come in the, in the car for a drive and I'll take you to the shops or whatever, you know, he's going to go to Delhi and <laughs> Sorry. smash his knee on the table. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, and, and the thing was with that was, you know, I'd hop in the car and his car was always pristine and immaculate and it was always like, one of the things he used to say to me was like, oh, you're never allowed to leave rubbish in the car. You should respect your cars and blah, blah, blah. And I guess it kind of like perked an interest as a kid uh, as to kind of like this respect that he had for this machine. Yeah. And, you know, he would always be talking about Formula One and stuff like that. And it just went from there. And um, so from that in my childhood growing up, I just sort of had this interest. And between, you know, cousins that had boyfriends who were into cars and things like that it just sort of became a passion through high school and um you know buying the uh street commodores magazine yeah, absolutely yeah uh, they were definitely like my first lot of passions the holdens um things like that and eventually came to falling in love with uh early holdens and one of my early cars and still to this day i would love one but i think yeah, i think we should gone. explain that here in australia you're rounded up in two groups. Yeah. Straight away, you're born. It's, yeah. You're either a four kid or a whole kid. It's not so much, obviously, it's not really, it is a thing, but it's not, it's a dying it's like, thing because dying. obviously we don't make Holdens anymore. No. Um, we make Fords. And we don't make Fords here not either. Australia, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Ford is obviously still around. Holden is, General Motors, is yeah. now General Motors, but back in the day, everything was made at home. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd have Falcon. Yeah, or a Commodore. So I was definitely a Holden boy by heart. That was where what my uncle was into. So it's kind of like any sporting team growing up. You know, if yeah. your dad's into it or your uncle, that's that's the team you're going to go for. 
Um, and it was also at a period in the Australian V8 supercar racing where Holden was just absolutely dominating the Mark Scaife era, stuff like that. You're going to hurt some people's feelings saying that, mate. But it was. It's true. I mean, it's, you know, you can't lie with statistics. So, yeah. yeah. So, anyhow, fast forward. So, get into high school. Um, and this is still early, um, early, I call it early internet days. And for those that were of our generation, it's like, you know, you dial up your 56K... You do, 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 do. What, what is Google? Yeah, what is Google? It was Ask Jeeves, I think, or Alta Vista was the early... Um, well, I just remember just typing, like typing in the actual websites. Yeah, yeah, it didn't have search engines. It was like, yeah. And um, so one of the first file sharing programs um, was a program called Napster. And Napster was the thing that blew up. Um, for people that might not remember Napster, they might remember LimeWire. So this if was, remember this wire, was yeah. pre LimeWire. Wow. Napster yeah. was the first one to come out and definitely face a lot of the um, you know copyright issues and stuff like that. because it was unheard of. It was like you know a digital platform where you were able to download and search up music and you know to give you some context, like you download a song and it'd take you a day. You know, so to do an album was a week. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the early file sharing stuff was more around photos and individual songs as opposed to albums just purely because everyone was like we're not waiting a week to download an album like you could still go to the shop and buy one but you know albums were 30 bucks um so sometimes you just might want to wait and not pay anything so early passion holden gemini's 1979 td two-door coupe uh for the sakes of this video i'll get you to punch an image oh yeah i've already done it <laughs> already done it, oh yeah, yeah. You're like, I'm, I'm into it. So it was one of my uh, early cars that I just fell in love with. I just thought, really cool um, car and whatnot. So I used to search Napster and Gemini photos. And I, and I noticed that in this program, you could see who you were downloading from. So you'd have like a username similar to like a forum. Yeah. Um, and I was always downloading photos off um, this one particular user called uh, Gemini Boy. And Shout out if you're still around. Oh, he is. He is. And I'll get to that point in a minute. Um, <laughs> so, and you had the ability to also message them, like PM them on the site. Yep, yep. And you'd sort of like, so emails were obviously around and that's fine. But I sort of hit him up and said, look, it, it, it's kind of frustrating because for them, they would have to upload the photo and then I would have to download it. So it was quite a bit of a process mm -hmm. every time. So it'd be like a almost like a weekly subscription. You'd be like, this week, let's see what Gemini photos have been released. So I hit this guy up and I said, hey, look, if you've got a collection of say 50, 100 photos of Gemini's, here's my email address. Can you can you just send me everything on an email? Yeah, because cool. then I can just download all the attachments. It's still a faster way. Like file sharing wasn't really refined at that point. It, no. was, it was an awesome thing, like I said, if you wanted a particular song or something very unique, but it wasn't like the platforms like it is now. Um, once again, search engine is not a thing. Mm. So got chatting to this guy and his name was Sean. And he said, oh, I'm actually from Perth, which is obviously where I'm from. And um, got chatting and he said, look, I'm part of this, this car club if you're really into cars. Um, come out for a car cruise. Um, meet the guys that run the club and... So how old were you at this stage? I was probably around 15. I'm going to say about 15. Yep, cool. So had a bit of a passion in cars, but never tinkered, didn't have my learner's driving license or anything like that. Um, just more the old magazine flicker, cutting pictures out yeah, of things. Yeah, So... Poster warrior. Spoke well, the to... The drones are good and their mics are good. <laughs> their mics are very good. Yeah, cool. That really craps me off about this. Ah, well, that's why we do it. Exactly. We can even consider this a rehearsal. Never know. Yep. Yeah, so, don't know where the video cut off, but yeah, went on first cruise, Sizzler, High Road, um, and I met these guys um, that ran this car club. Uh, so, Sean, which was the guy, um, Gemini Boy, and he was my age, where I think we're only about six months, eight months apart in age with each other. Um, and I'm still friends with Sean, right? And this is where this whole conversation is going around about those lifelong friendships. So I met Sean. There was three or four guys that ran this car club, Snipers. Um, was a guy. Snipers? Snipers, yeah. yeah. And 
compared to today's standards, you would call it pretty much a ricer car club. Yeah. It was all about the neons, the sound system. Yeah, of course. Right, but that's that what, was the era. That was modified, right? Like, you know, putting 17s on your 15-inch mags and stuff like that, right? Like, that's that's mods. So, I met a guy called Al, another guy called Chris, uh, one guy called Glenn, and the other guy was Brendan. Right. And these were the four leaders, I guess you call them, of, the, of that car club, and they would write the maps. So, Al had a Lancer. Nice. Um, CC two-door coupe. Um, Chris had a Magna. Um, Glenn had a Camry. A Camry? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I think it had like a, it was like an import version or something. So it had like a twin cam oh. motor. It was kind of like a 80s Camry, but it was kind of like a yeah, cool the Camry. VVT or something. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, right, okay. And Brendan, who had a GC8 uh, WRX at the time. So met these guys and started sort of like ev um, involving myself more and more in the car scene. You know, granted I was 15, 16, and then only really having my license at 17. So my dad, um, his car that he was driving was a Mitsubishi Magna. Oh, right. Yeah. So okay, yeah. His, his, uh, he had, he had, had multiple Magnas. The car that he sold to me slash gave to me as my first car was a 1986 Mitsubishi TM Elite. Uh, car unfortunately, but... Oh, what a bugger. Uh, 87, I think. That's right, the key bangers would have been cool. I didn't know what key bangers were at that time. Oh, what a bugger. So, what a shame. But that's around the time having a Magna, I um, signed up to the Magna Club. Yeah, so AMC. This is AMC, yeah. Australian Mitsubishi Guy at Magna Club. Um, and had the forum name 86 Elite. Mm. Now, context, everyone was like, oh, it's the year that you're born, 1986. Yeah. But I actually had an 86, 86 Elite, Elite Magna. Which is cool. And that was my forum name. And that's how you always, it's like when you say phone contacts these days and you're like, Reese Magna or, you know, uh, Gaffney Monaro. Exactly, yeah. Right? Like, that's kind of like what forum names were generally yeah, about. about. It was either your license plates that you had, had? Yep. or a name that you were given by people within the club for being, I don't know, a dickhead. Yeah, Donkey, kind of, donkey yeah, Man. Yeah. yeah, Donkey Man 96 or something. I don't know. Like, you always had names like that. So, um, you know, Chris, I think his name was like Shadow or something like that. And I can't remember, you know, what Glenn, oh, his username was like Toy CSX. Cause it was like a CSX Camry nice. that he had. I can't remember, but things like that. It was a whole different world. And, and I know that you can appreciate this cause we came from, from that, that same. same. Yeah. yeah. Um, so fast forward, I sold the Magna. I bought a Mitsubishi Sigma. So we went to- Was it a turbo? It was a Sigma. Was yeah, it that's a it, you bought a Sigma, it was not a turbo. It was not a turbo, um, but Astron 2.6 had a cam. Oh, it wasn't Astron 2 litre. No, no, no. It had a 2.6, had a Scorpion rear end in it, which gave you disc rear end. It ran a five speed Borg Warner. Um, so I think it had an LSD rear end in it as well. Um, That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, it was. It was actually. Was it a Chrysler Sigma or, or no, a Mitsubishi no, it was, Sigma? It was a GK, so it was an 84. I think yeah. 84 GK. Um, <laughs> there was a bit of a transition period where they used to yeah. call Mitsubishi cars Chrysler. Because, yeah. That's and, a story um, for another day. Yeah, so I used to cruise around that, and then I started going on these cruises, and all of a sudden, Brendan, who was one of the leaders of this car club's brother, started coming out, and he had a 1992 TR Magna Turbo. Picture right here. Yes. And... Naruto Uzumaki? That was me. So that was not on the car when I bought it. Um... He, long story short, had a lot of problems, built it, had a lot of problems, sold it to me. I bought all his problems. Thanks very much, Jussie. Um, still friends with him. Um, and dumped dumb amounts of money into it. Obviously got involved in the Magna Club. Yep. Uh, back in the Magna Club after having a hiatus with the Sigma. Although I was kind of like in it, but I wasn't, you know. Um, it's like rocking up to a Commodore cruising a Falcon. Done it. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, and, and that was that. And then I, I ended up selling Sigma, buying the TR Turbo, 
um, and, spent. Yes, some because money. this is when you start getting mechanically into yeah. cars. Because yeah. you're how old were you at this stage? So, just trying to think roughly timeline in life. You must have been I about have 19. 18 or 19. Yeah. yeah. So, you, stage, so yeah. you're 19, you're, you're spending money on this car, it keeps breaking. Yep. How many times do you have to head off that car? Uh, so that, Personally. <laughs> personally. Not, it got to the point that my very good mechanic friend at the time who had a business no longer had it, but um, he pretty much bought me a torque wrench and said, you're going to learn. Um, and not understanding how two different heads worked because the block was O-ring. Do you remember this? Yes. Yes. Yep. And the spare head that I bought was not recessed. Yes. And I didn't know this. So it kept what I thought was blowing head gaskets and not sealing because I had the copper, the copper head gasket and used to have to put this special pepper um, stuff that apparently melted copper or helped it fuse. Yeah. And I could not get it done. Uh, one day, I think I did the head something like nine, ten times uh, in a row. Yeah. Like in a day. In a day? In a day. Yeah. In a day. You took it off and on? On and on off. Like no word of light. Nine um, times. So you took yeah. it off. You oh, no, still broken. Yeah. Took it off. Tried because it was, very, it was very obvious, right? So... Because it literally would not seal, um, it would start, but as soon as it started, it would blow like a litre of water. We, out of will, exhaust. we will mention that Ben, uh, which I will tell you a funny story about this, Ben did have ARP head studs that you could reuse at that stage, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I can't remember what I was, but yeah, it was a reusable setup. It wasn't like a one and done and yeah. a custom head gasket. And you, you literally, all you were doing was just trying to seal this copper. Yeah, did you ever use, thing. Do you ever use ATV? I had copper spray. I tried copper spray. I never used ATV. I would love to use ATV and see how long that lasts. Yeah, I never used ATV. Um, had copper, because the copper head gasket, like back then it was a CNC machined. Yes. I paid $500. I still got it. It's around yeah. here, it's around here yeah. somewhere. I paid five hundred dollars for that. It was like a one of one, very very uh, random, know. yeah, uh, thing. But yeah, um, it was very obvious. Basically, what I was getting at. So I was like, start it up, run it. As soon as it started, if it blew water, I was like, nah, hasn't sealed. Go inside, have a drink, wait ten minutes, walk back out. Screwdriver in the water pump pulley. Yeah. Because remember, you have to have that. That had the single cam yeah. thing, and it was like, and because it was single cam as well, it was very like eight studs or whatever it was, six studs to get the head off. Yeah, jeez, man. There wasn't much to it. I'd almost to the point where you'd leave the manifold, like the intake all attached, and I could like fold the head up. Yep. Um, enough that I could kind of get to the head surface and the block surface, run like a scotch bright, give it a little shoot, bit of copper spray, head gasket back on, donk it back on, talk, talk, talk. So how long did you have that car actually running for? Longest period of time. I had it running for a fair while. I did buy it running. Uh, I blew it up, built another engine. When that engine was built, that's when I had the issues. Um, no, so I didn't have the issues. Then I swapped the head and then I had the issues. And at that point, I bought the Black Magna. Right. Which is when you bought the TR. I'm well, pretty sure I had the Black Magna. Well, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think. Yes, you did have a uh, Black Magna because because like I met you at the AMC the meet. Cruise, yeah, we yeah. were already friends by that stage. Yeah, well, we yeah we had no AMC cruise the first time we had met. Yes, AMC cruise, but the TR like you. you oh yeah, we went up on the TR. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then I blew it up. Yeah, and, I mean, and, look, it. I mean that car must have gone through so many bloody engines. I know, I know Justin did too, but I did. It was one. also the time, you know, 98 was like the godsend fuel. Yeah. Right? Like, there was no ethanol. Haltech was only just DOS. coming onto the scene. Like, I had a. It was all DOS, guys. E6X, which wasn't quite their early standalone ECU, no. but it was one of. Um, it was, yeah, DOS, very Windows 95, like, yeah. you know, even for a standalone ECU, there was no real coil on plug. No, no, God like, no. 
Everyone's like, it, nah, wasted spark was the best technology you kind of had. Yeah, well, um, that, well, you're using, well, unless you had lots and lots of money, because stuff wasn't cheap. No, and uh, uh, there was only certain... Yeah. And the thing is, you go to say, look, we've got this uh, four-cylinder Astro motor. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you want, where do you want us to do with that? Yeah. You know? Which we still face to this day, you know, with the 6G. Well, well I mean, the 6G, look, uh, no, the 6G was definitely better back yeah. then. Um, thanks to places like RPW and, and um, uh, 3SX. But they, RPW has been long, around for a very long time. And they were Astron as well. They were Astron originally. Yeah. Um, but so you could get stuff. You could yeah. get cams, yep. just mild stuff. And then they, yep. you know, manifold. Evolved to... Yeah, and like evolved that. to this stuff now, which you guys can get from Broughton. Brayton. 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 Yeah. Pretty cool, pretty cool piece. But performance, good, good guys actually. Very nice to talk to. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mate, do awesome work. And now yeah, everyone can buy that for the yeah. single overhead cam, or you can also get it for your Maverick, but it's a different manifold design. So make sure you do, if you do look it up and go to the website, make sure you actually tell them what type of engine you got. Yeah. Whether it be dual overhead cam, single overhead cam with Myvec, yeah. or just single overhead cam yeah. like mine. Yeah. So. It, it, was, it was a different era, right, is mm. what I was getting at, is, is like, you know, there was tried and true methods, which was 98, low compression, it was never about, you know, it was, it was uh, you know, you would never do a high compression turbo build back in the day. No, oh, well, you no know, one, you, didn't have the, you didn't have the fuel to do it. But no one knew how to tune around it. Like, it was like, oh, no, you'll make your motor detonate and you'll melt a piston and the knowledge and stuff wasn't there. There was very few tuners that actually had a good understanding. Right, and that's I don't know if that was just a Perth thing or just an error thing. Well, in Australia, I mean, EA, you know, E85 had only been around for about uh, not even 20 years at this point, really, if you think about it. Well, ethanol and methanol and stuff was literally more just so it was, everyone was still everyone yeah. was still learning. I mean, and uh, look, pro pro there probably was people that could do it, yeah, but they were very, very clever people, and there were very few. I yeah. mean. Yeah. And a lot of them are now at the point where they're retiring or have retired. Oh, yeah. But it's not like today where you can uh, you know, get a course on the um, internet yeah. and you get a computer and you can tune your car. Like, it's, guys, like, it, it was old school stuff. You didn't have a choice. You had to go to a tuning shop. You had to... It, and the and dinos were old school. I mean, it, just, it goes on and on. Yeah. It was a different world. And it's definitely, like, advanced a lot in a good way. Oh, these guys are lucky. Yeah, like in a good way. The, yeah. the fact that you can just like wish it on things like Amazon and eBay and... Yeah, so you got information, whatever. although false information is a pain in the ass. And you got to admit that you, I think the you, read up, forums, you read up things like, oh, you got to accept this. I death of forums was definitely a sad day. Um, yeah, the for forums are great because you could literally research it 10 times and you would find 10 people that have done it this certain way and it's worked it, it was versus really people that like, haven't. Forums were, to me, were like a hybrid between what we would consider social media and an information guide. Because it was the way that you communicated pre-Facebook. Yeah. You really only had like ICQ and Messenger. And even then it was more of just a... MSN. Yeah. It was only like a, oh, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Let's catch up, whatever. But you wouldn't use it as a way to like plan a cruise or anything. Like that wasn't even thought of. It no. was like, if you want to go on a cruise, you'd write a map, you'd print it off, you'd hand it out. So forums were like this hybrid thing before social media where you'd put a question up, but you'd also have banter. Yeah, oh no, it was like, great. No, it was... On the forums, like, and they were posts. It's like literally, imagine being on Facebook and every single post is a response to yeah. something, right? Well, that was, that's what forums were. Well, it, was, it, was, it was way better. Yeah. This, I got a little, I'm not, not like that. I like it. Facebook's good. Yeah. Uh, like, I, like I'm not qualified, right? Like I'm not a... No. I'm not a mechanic. No, we're both both not mechanics actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've just been doing this long enough that um, we have some more experience than some mechanics that we know. Yeah. So it's just one of those things. Well, and we, we specialise in the six G. Yeah, the six G because is our is our jam. It's something that's never really been considered like a performance platform. So you know anything that's common LSs, for example, RVs, two J. Then anyway, you haven't finished your story. Well, meeting you for the first time. Yeah, oh my God, I'm sorry, sorry guys, we've gone, gone off on a tangent. Meeting us for the first time. Anyway, so we went to this AMC thing. Cruise, yeah. Cruise, uh, I met uh, this guy here. This guy's lost like, this bloke is bonkers because I was a bit more... Yes, you were 
out of control. Yeah, I, I had a lot of energy, okay? Sort of thing. A lot is an understatement. Yeah. Um, um, I met you. Uh, we hadn't even gotten to the end of the cruise, which was to stay up at a house in 2J, which was a couple of hours north of Paul. Yeah. Uh, friends of ours, Paulie, um, had a cabin thing there, and we were just going to have a night on the beers around a campfire. Uh, we'd only gotten, I think, halfway through the cruise, and we were in the middle of a forest area on a road. And someone's like, oh, Reese Fricker's here or something like that. And you rocked up in the GDO yep. with a very young Danielle. Yes, uh, my very young wife. wife. Yep. It was my wife get then. And uh, um, and you literally just did this monstrous burnout. No, what I did was I had a smoke machine in the boot. Okay. But no, burn, no rubber was laid on that road. Because that's illegal. Mm -hmm. It was a smoke machine. Okay. Cool. multiple smoke machines because we couldn't yeah. see for a while after I did that. I yeah, remember. and I just remember you being a little bit stressed after the burnout because then you had that realisation that one, we've still got to finish the cruise and two, you then had a 400 plus kilometre drive. There were brand new sets of tyres, I remember that. I literally tires. just got them and I had burnt. I had no, sorry, what I mean? They were very old tyres and yeah. they were already knackered. Yeah, yeah, exactly, sure. And you were like, oh, that's right, I've still got to drive home. And I'm pretty sure we were <laughs> somewhere around those wear indicators. Do you know why I could do stuff like that? I still lived with my parents, I had a good job, mm -hmm. and I had money to burn. Yep. Literally burn. In the form of yes. in the form of smoke tires, with the smoke machine. Sorry, <laughs> with the smoke machine. Um, I mean, it was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a carefree world. Things were cheaper as well, right? Like, it's not the same. You guys wrapped up my GDO too. We did in, in glad wrap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad wrap thing wrap. It was. Um, oh look, it was a fun night. No, and, it's and, good. It's and, good way. It's good way to protect things. You should always use glad wrap to stop things from happening. Yep. Well, you know what to say. Don't be silly. No, don't be a fool. Cover your tool. Okay. Don't be silly to wrap your woolly. Don't be silly to wrap your woolly. <laughs> Anyhow. Yeah, I like that too. That's yeah, good. Yeah, we're going to turn into a health health advice channel. Still, absolutely. Um, look, and to be honest, that like from that point, I think with the involvement with the Magna Club, um, that was a kind of like a game changer with Paulie and stuff because I remember like the club was, we, it wasn't a bad club. It was a very old school club as in like, the Magnus Club had already yeah. been around for a little while. Oh, yeah. Magnus had been around for already 15, 20 years. Mm. But the third gen uh, and 380s were just starting to on that scene at that point. Yeah. And a lot of it was um, new to a lot of people. So they're still, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 car. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, like well, I mean, I brought my... My first car was a Magna, yeah. uh, which is still right next to me, actually. Yeah. Um, and that was $14,000. Yeah. Second hand. Um, it's always been in my family, actually, this, my car. Yeah. It was my uncle's bank car from Westpac. Yep. So it was always, always been in mine, on, in the, in the frickin' name. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, well, I got, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's got, got a history of us, but what we're trying to say is, um, I have no idea what we're trying to say. I've no, I was saying, was saying of like, <laughs> like, that's where I kind of like really stepped into that, into that realm. So like, I've got to become a state representative for. Yeah, that's club. right. You were a state um, rep for ages. Yeah couple of years actually um and really like that's where i met the likes of claudio yeah mike and i know these people aren't going to know who these are but we oh, i'll put us i'll put some pictures up of us at car shows oh, some great photos of claudio he's always uh, oh yeah oh, you have to that. send me some and i'll put them up yeah. here's some um, photos of danielle mike mike um yeah and like timmy although i'm not like super close with timmy anymore but like we are mates yeah um trent um jamie uh, like all these guys that um Andrew, um, you think about all the people that we used to cruise with. And, and it got to a point where peak AMC for me in WA, we would hold a weekly cruise every Thursday. Yeah. And uh, it started off when I took over, it was like five to maybe seven cars was a good turnout. Uh, every Thursday after work, it was like, you got to remember people had other responsibilities. We got it to like minimum 15 cars to like a really good turnout would be around 20, 21 Dude, That's cars. insane, man. That's and a lot that's of cuts. that's like, you gotta, weekly. Got, for, for people that are watching this from overseas, if there is anyone watching this from overseas, Magnas are not a popular car in no. Australia. Like no. they are the most hated vehicle on, other than a Camry. It's, it's literally yeah. Magna Camry. 
they'd, they'd, they'd be on that. And that is plane. debatable. Yeah. Some people yeah. would say it's the other way around. But the only difference is, is like you ask anybody about a Magna. Yeah. They'll hate on it, but then they always make these comments. They go, "Oh, my parents had one, or someone had one, and they actually drove really well, and I quite liked it. I just hate that it's front wheel drive. I, I just hate that it's not holding and forward. Yeah. So, and the thing was, is like. Well, they, they, they weren't all front drive. That's the thing, guys. Statistically, they, on paperwork, and I'm just going to go back to it and say that they were actually a better car. They made more power. No, no, no. But no, no, you're, no, you're right. They right? made more power. power. They were lighter. They were better air resistant. Yeah. They had the most air. First Australian production car yeah. to come out with a five-speed automatic. Is that right? Yep. Beat the Commodore on the Falcon. Because they were still running four L60s. Yeah, right. Yep. I did, I, no, I did not know that. Yeah, so a VZ was the first five-speed. Are you talking order. about the old TM Magnus? TM, no, no, TM? no. Because no. they were five-speed. No, they weren't. Mine was four. They're four. They were four-speed. They three with an overdrive. Are you talking about the automatic? So a 2000... Automatic and manual? Automatic. Oh, uh, they were five-speed manual, though. Yeah, five-speed manuals, but an automatic... Oh, uh, five-speed auto. Well, majority of Commodores and Falcons were autos. Yeah, true, yeah. There were, were manuals, not as popular, even back then, but... As for an Australian production car, so you, if you lined up a Falcon, a Commodore, and a Magna, the Magna was the first Australian production car to bring out a five-speed automatic. I was sorry, but I was thinking of co coefficiency. Coefficiency. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when I left school, I went to Year Ten, finished Year Ten, and um, I wasn't into cars at all. Right. Now, my brother Liam, good kid, he was he loved cars, mm. and so like I would go through his car magazines and I find them quite interesting. But um, for me, it was, I got this car when I was 16, hadn't got my license. We got a license in Western Australia 17. at 17, yep. uh, unless you have a scooter license. But yeah, so 17, got my license, didn't know anyone. So I would just literally just drive around. And um, good to me, I had a pretty ballsy. I went down to this uh, car meet down at Milton and just started talking to the guys and it just... I just, I've had long, life long friendships from then. Like I still talk to the people and this was what, 20 years ago. Mm. Um, and then I went to Perth, went to car things in Perth because I had this Magna, boom, met Ben, met all and the you, Perth crew. And you started your own club. I, I did, uh, Triple D. Yeah. So if yeah. anyone remembers those days, hit, hit us up. Um, Early Triple D days, good, later Triple D days. Mm. Yeah. But it got a bit out of control. Well, it was, it was, well. it was, it was a lot because we we're doing our, our Perth and Albany. Yeah. And there was a lot of hate in the car scene at that particular time. It, it kind of like all of a sudden everyone caught on to car clubs and cruises and all of a sudden it kind of like blew up. And then it seemed to come like this clicky thing. So you had like TPC, the Purple Circle, um, Chosen Few. Anti-lag. Anti-lag. Anti-lag was a big one. Anti Anti I don't know why anti-lag hated us so bad. Um, because like we were getting like over 100 cars easily. Yeah. Like yeah. So we like, uh, what's the, uh, SciTech in yeah. Perth. We, we, it took us half an hour to get out of the Blake car park. It yeah. was that packed. We're talking, that, that's like 300 something cars. It was My insane. biggest car cruise, there was two car cruises that I remember mm. still to this day being the biggest. And there was a non-car cruise that was still the most hectic thing I've ever been to. So there was the Victorian bushfire cruise that we held in Perth. Um, that was started at SciTech. We had people parking up the freeway uh, emergency lane. Yeah. The SciTech was full. There was a little dirt car park across the road that was full and people were parking up the on-ramp heading north. There was that many people. The first Paul Walker uh, I was gonna cruise say, I was going to say the same thing. Would have to be... Yeah, that was, dude, that was insane. So that was insane. That was stupid. That was like two hours we, to get out of a car park. We left the first car park, skipped the second car park, yeah. went to the third car park meet on the map. Yeah. People were already turning up at that, and we had friends that were still stuck in the first car park. I think it was one of those it, friends. It was... Unbelievable. Like, it was, the cars were awesome. Easily mate. over a thousand cars. Easily. Um, and and that's people like, there's no way, but it was, it literally stood traffic. Stood. I'm sure we'll find some footage and we'll chuck yeah. it up because um, that was, that was epic. And the only other one I remember, which was, uh, our WA homeboy, Mr. Andrew Hawkins, um, when he used to be part of uh, Hot in, Fours. Ignition. 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 Dude, and, um, please come back and do that again, bro. 
That was I sick. Remember, I remember he did a, I think it was like a meet and greet. It was like a static. Hillary's. At Hillary's. And. Right. Skyline's <sighs> reign supreme. Yeah, like. That was I sick. remember we were there. I think we rocked up. I was in a friend's R33 GTST Skyline. Um, we rocked up maybe 6, 7 p.m. at night. It was for like an 8, 9 o'clock meet and greet kind of thing. Did you get stickered? The cops. No, nah, my friend didn't. My, the cops turned up. That's right. The cops did turn up at about 10 or 11. They blocked the entire car park in. And literally, unless you were the first couple of cars that got out, every single car inspected, breatho, license check, blah, blah, blah. And I think we left at about 5.30, 6 in the morning. You know what? If, if it was me... I would just walk away from my car, lock it up, walk away, pick it up tomorrow. Yeah. It was just like one of those most hectic nights. And everyone thought it was a cruise, but it wasn't. It was a static meet. But, and I just remember Andrew like giving the cops so much shit. Yeah. Sorry if you blur that out. But no, no, no. I just remember. It's a podcast. Like, we don't care. It's I just remember it was like, we were standing in the circle and they're like, I mean, you got to remember like, it's, it's a bunch of dudes. Like as much as there was some chicks. Yeah. Right. And I know it was there because I think it's on a DVD. There was a DVD because um, Louise is on it. The, the Turbo XL. XL. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. It's, uh, yeah. I've, I've watched it a couple times. It's actually on YouTube. So on I YouTube. will put a, put a link but to like, it. But I remember he was like up to the cop's face. He's like, you know, how dare you? We're all trying to be like enthusiasts here. We're doing nothing wrong. We're at a public car park. Even though everyone's doing burnouts. Well, look. <laughs> this is like, you know. You know what I get? No one asked you about burnouts. What? Really sh- sh- pisses me off. All those people that were there are taxpayers as well. Yeah. And they don't give us any way to do stuff like that. No. You know, let kids get it out of the system, man. Yeah, and I think... I mean, the, the it was scene, not, that definitely yeah. was not the, the right place to do it. it was yeah. from back then yeah. to what it is now is day and night difference. Oh, yeah. No. Like, you look at the like, like press burnout scene, there's 14,000 people on that page alone. Yeah, well, because we had to go that way. Um, but we didn't have a choice. We've got country competitions, guys like your Chads of the world that have like started the Southwest series. Then you've got like a Northern series that travels like Newman, um, Caratha, uh, things like that. I kind of there's a couple more North River as well. Um, so it's it's good that, that that series has evolved into that, and we've got those abilities. Well, to- we have, we had like I said yeah. we, we had to because we're just getting absolutely hounded for it. Well, the law has changed. Right. Oh, well, that's right. You get you impounded. Yeah. You used to get away with. Hello, ladies. You want to come and say hello to the camera? No. Much upset. Oh. Well, do you want to leave it there? We can. <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> we didn't even get. I didn't even finish my story. Oh. I didn't even. Where get... was your story going? Oh, well, I was just just saying that. Yeah. Then I got into modifying cars and and. Um, I lived in Perth and did the car scene up there, but yeah, yeah anyway, so, okay. but yeah, it's, it's been a good thing. We've had heaps of camera issues, so we're going to fix that and yeah. we're going to have a list of actual crap we're going to talk about in the future yeah. and really try to make this work. My son, Logie Bear, we're going to get him up here and have a talk. That'd be nice. Yeah. And we'll go from there, mate. I think some good debates should happen. Oh, I would definitely love the debate. Um... Where the car scene's going, mm. um, we're electric, fuel, um, engine mods, what's the cheapest engine mods, just, just stuff like that. Like, yeah. th- this was just a test run, yeah. uh, but we, we're definitely going to be making them more interesting and make it flow a little bit better, I think. One thing for me that I've noticed with a lot of the newer generation, this might be more related to like your initial, say, conversations with like Josh, yeah. was how to get involved. So, uh, like, yeah. like that first thing, because... It is a different world, social media, very clicky, stuff like that, but it's still like about how do you get involved in the car scene, what do you do? Come here, Lou. So, Come here, give me a hug. What? You want to get in? Do you want to get on the camera? No, Mum just made you clean. Mum just made you clean? Yeah. Oh, no. Not clean. No, not clean. It's just a horrible thing, isn't it? Oh, I'm poor well, mum. On that note, I'm going to go back to Perth. Back to Perth. Um, bit of a drive, but... As always, appreciate the company, the time, the effort. Always, man. Really wanted to get this out um, and just have a crack at it. I think that we can definitely have some good conversations and um, 
yeah, have some good guests. And uh, think, so yeah, name Talk and Talk. Just see what you reckon, if that's a good name. If you think that's crap, just let us know. Are we gonna put this on the main channel or are we gonna put it on maybe Grease Garage 2? Is there gonna be a sub channel? I don't think it, we're ready to do a subby channel yet. Maybe we just don't upload it ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting uploaded because we spent like two hours doing it. That's fine. No, um, yeah, we've got to figure that all out. Early days, guys, but stick with us. Um, be good to have some conversation. If you've got some topics, chuck them in the comments. Yeah, yeah we, 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 want a, we want a way to connect more with, yep. with our guys yep. sort of thing. So, hey, say hello. Say hello. Oh, 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 buddy. It's okay. So, yeah, till next time, and we might do a part two to this chat, and we'll go from there. We'll definitely go from there. All right, guys, thank you. See ya. Bye. Why are you so grumpy? Well, mum made me clean and, and if I don't clean more, I would not want to go camping and I don't want to clean. Are we going camping? I don't want to talk to me. What's that? But cleaning's part of what you got to do, mate. Yeah, you got to clean, bro. Dad has to clean. Everyone has to clean. Clean up his act. <laughs> clean up that attitude, boy.